Okay, Brandon over here. So anyway, you know, we've covered a lot at this set, at this time, and I have really enjoyed doing these videos. Um, it's, um, it's been a challenge for sure, definitely, while, while I've had certification exams to, to do them, but it's also been very elating. And I really appreciated a lot of the positive feedback that I've gotten just out from the community, which is definitely pushing me to still do these videos or whatever else. Um, I'd say I'm very touched by the overwhelming response. So thank you very, very much. Um, that will push me to continue to do this. Not all training needs to be thousands of dollars in order to get an official, you know, or at least to get a you know, professional training you who's experienced with it. A lot of training can be just like this. I'm a big believer in that. And um, I particularly like people who are self-motivated. I, I know myself, I am, and I love this material, and I hope you love it too. All we're doing over here, guys, is we're going to cover um, pie charts. And what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct a pie chart, see how you use one. And once again, I'm going to throw some tips in there that were, you know, not within the section, but just from an instructor's point of view. Overall, if you've been doing every single tutorial, you're doing wonderful. Keep it up. And hey, when we get through this, we're going to get through this every single part. I promise. Well, I'll make sure that you leave knowing how to use SSRS. Thanks again. Hope you guys really enjoy the tutorial. Take care. And I'll turn this off now. <laughs> Bye. All right, so here we go. Anyway, you know, we got a ch we've got a chance to see a lot in these tutorials now. And you've come a very long way, as I've said, basically stepping through every single one. And we still have a number of good tutorials to do, which is pretty exciting about this series. One of them is this particular module. It's another one of those modules that's, you know, it's short and it's sweet, but you learn some things that are helpful. Just one or two things here, maybe two or three things here that take you a lot further. So let's go ahead and do this one now. And I'll explain it. And remember again, just for those of you who might be brand new, this is a full series. So you can go back um, on my YouTube channel. In fact, let me just put over here. You can see that. Ignore ESPN over there. And just in case you're just finding it, you can come down to my YouTube channel. And if you so like, right there in the playlist, you'll see this is a full series on Report Builder. And remember, what I did was I took Microsoft's, um, I took Microsoft's tutorials and did them. So that way you can go back and do them on your own because labs are very effective. So you need the hands-on experience. And I basically added an instructor's touch. So I added, base, um, I did all of these basically on a video so you could repeat afterwards. And I also added explanations here. These are excellent tutorials on their own. I felt like with the instructor's touch that really made the show. And it's essentially really becoming a full SSRS course that's free. And I'm very proud of it at this stage. All right, now coming back over here, we're going to do this add a pie chart and see how that's done. So let me click on reports. Then just as I've been doing before, I made one slight derivation. I installed SharePoint 2013 one night and I'm doing all my labs from SharePoint 2013. Now this would work for SharePoint 2013. This would work for Dynamics AX, Dynamics CRM. This would work pretty much for any product that's basically running SSRS, which is which within Microsoft, there are a whole lot of them even some Oracle products, some IBM products, you name it, that SSRS works with. So very helpful over here. So the steps you're learning are going to be core for whatever else. I just chose to use SharePoint 2013 as an environment for hosting these particular reports. So I'm launching Report Builder yet again. And we're about to get started with this chart wizard, which is really nice. So hang on for just a moment as it launches. There we go. And there, I'm ready to start. Okay. Now, to begin with, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the chart wizard because chart wizard basically says I'm ready to create a chart. You all have seen other ways of launching a chart also through the insert tab over here. But we're using chart wizard over here to get started because initially we're building a chart for this particular report. Now, let me click next. Now, what we're going to do next is do a data source. And I've explained this on every single tutorial, right? Text that tells you the name of the database. Um, actually tells you the um, location, the server where the database is located, and what type of security that it's using. So you guys can see that over there. Um, what I'm doing over here is I've used AdventureWorks, but that wasn't even really required here. I'm just doing this to display simply how you connect to a database in order to get your information. Um, normally, it would be required. However, though, in this case, we have an embedded query that's supplying all of our data. Still, this is helpful. So I'm come back over here and just add this right over there. Click OK. And then I explained to everyone, too, that I would have loved to have finished setting up my SharePoint environment, but, I, but unfortunately, I have been very, very busy having to study for certifications. This is the off time for Microsoft Certified Trainers. And so because of that, I have not been able to give this quite as much attention, at least my virtual machine, as I will when I get done with all my certification exams. 
There we go. And click OK. As a requirement, Microsoft certified trainers have to maintain certification. So that's the reason why you guys might hear me talking about it. It's um, a necessary requirement for us to be able to teach people official Microsoft curriculum. OK, let me click Next. There we go. And then a data set. All right. So this is what we're going to use as data for the actual report. Remember I said that data set and during development, it's just going to be the names of the columns, a aka metadata, data that describes data, like what are all the column names. After this, though, afterwards, it becomes the actual data that the report uses once we click run over here. So I'm going to come back and get the data set, the embedded query, right from the actual lab. Come down, come down, come down, come down. There we go. And there's my query, so I'll click copy. Sure, I'll allow access. Then I'll come back, whoops, whoops, and bring it up over here, and I'll paste it right over here. Excellent, and run it. Good, okay. So now I've actually got a data set. I'm going to click Next. Now all we're looking at is the pie chart. We're just seeing a couple of really cool things about it, so I'll explain them. So let me click Pie over here, and then let me click Next. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and set up the pie. Now, whenever we think of this, right, values are the things that we always quantify. Categories are the things that are used to describe things, right? So when we see sections of a pie, we're looking at categories, right? But the size of those sections is going to be determined by by the relative amount of values in this particular case. So what I'm going to do first is, okay, the sections of the pie that I want to look at that are going to have different colors, product. And you guys can actually see that over here just for a second, just to show you, that whenever I go with categories, what I'm talking about is these sections right here. And notice the different colors. See how this color over here is, is, is dark blue, and this color over here is lighter blue, and this color over here is some sort of, I don't know, I'll call it light green, even though that's not technically correct and this color over here is closer to gray, um, that sort of thing. These different colors are represented by the category. So because we have one, two, three, four, five, you know, or six categories in this particular case, or something close to that, we've got that many slices. So categories mean the number of slices. Now, the proportion of each slice, though, the size of each slice is going to be determined by the values. So values are what we do in order to get the sizes of each slice within a pie. There we go. So we're going to look at sales in order to determine our values in this particular case. All right. Now, once we've got that done, I'm going to click Next. And right off the bat, we choose a default look and feel, which is known as a, you know, a style, right? These, these basically have pre-configured settings for all these background and border properties and things like that, that, that basically define the look of the, actual, of the actual chart. Of course, we can change all this. We can go right into the properties and start changing them right in here essentially once we have the chart up. But here I'm going to click Finish. There. Okay, now once I've actually got that done, I'm going to click Run just to preview this for a second. And give it just a moment over here and it'll start rendering in just a second on my SharePoint 2013 machine. And let it load, 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 and there we go. Okay, so that's our initial style. Not really too helpful. Those are all of our different slices over there, depending upon the number of categories we had, right? Um, those are all of, um, um, these are not labeled at the moment. This is my little chart right over here, and this is a chart title. So it's clearly in need of some work, so let's get started. Got to have labels. We all got to have labels, right? I mean, there's no choice about that. This is, this is a chart title. So we're going to add labels, but before we do, let me make this a little bit bigger so that we can all see it on our videos. And I'm going to make this larger than normal, mainly because I'm using videos of 1920 by 1080 resolution. Um, and I want to make sure everyone can see it because sometimes on the YouTube videos it comes out real small. So what I did was I arbitrarily chose some huge, big type chart, as you guys can see over here. In fact, I'm bringing it all the way over just like this. Um, real life, no, your chart would not be this big. But, you know, you guys can see over here I've made it this 8 size over here and I've got this... I've got this particular page and I went all the way down to seven point something inches um, just so you can see all the things clearly deline delineated and quite clear. That's the only reason why I did that. All right. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to right click on the chart. So you'd right click on the chart. And you guys will see that there's two places here. <clears throat> if I right click on the chart, I get chart area properties. Okay. Now if I click on the outside over here, right over here, I end up getting, I end up getting a new part over here, which is called chart area and you guys can see over here the chart properties so one of these actually refers to the actual chart over here one of these refers to the actual inside of the chart and then let me click one more place inside of this place the actual pie it's play itself and then right click 
and you guys see over here now I actually get the core pie itself so one thing I want to show you over here is that there's a pie area right here you guys can see that this means that you're altering properties on the pie like the display and the colors right there in the pie this outside over here if you see with the border and whatever else that's over here this outside over here um, covers things like covers things like the axes on the horizontal or the vertical if you need to add that or how big you want this particular area to be or if you want some sort of background color rather than white and then this big area right over here covers the overall feel as you guys can see just like that so when I click over here and you guys see how it kind of switches over you can see this little thing on the outside this is the overall feel of the entire chart so we can do things like change the way these corners appear stuff like that add page breaks if we need to that's sort of what we're doing over there so we guys can see three different areas over here for basically altering the chart I'm gonna come inside where it says right click the pie chart so I'm gonna click on the pie chart right over here then what I'm gonna click is show data labels now once I click on show data labels what it wants me to do next is to actually change and actually change it to showing in percent fashion okay to do percent what you have to do is click on any one of the labels that is right click on any one of the labels then come down over here when you've got that right click on any one of the labels you guys can see over here and you've got and you've got an option called series label properties so click on that as you guys can imagine series label properties is turning around on that particular on all those labels that appear right as series for the values right um, and it's basically altering those values that's what's happening I mean that's exactly what it does or it's formatting those values not altering them I'm sorry so what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna come back and you guys will see that first there's this general and then you guys can see over here that um, I mean, you've got this font number whatever else and we've been seeing all of this before none of this is different now one thing that might be slightly different is for the label data there's a drop down we can click called pound drop down that gives us options for actually displaying this data right and how do we want to actually do this and and how do we want to format it when we click on pound percent over here what it says is actually take this label now right or actually take this label data and use it as percents now it's not saying now a, a common mistake that people make is this they'll come into number and think that if they go number percentage that's gonna make it a percent no it won't it'll take the existing value and then add a percentage on it so like if the existing value is 20,000 it'll make it 20,000 percent that's not what we want instead what we want to do is we go into label data and that says calculate all of this as a percentage so remember that distinction right over here label data is where we calculate these charts as percentages as opposed to as opposed to label um, number where we actually display it as a percent where it goes two decimal places back essentially and then gives a percentage okay now once we click on label data we got a confirm message warning us letting us know that it's gonna actually calculate a real percentage so it's gonna take those values and essentially you know um, it's gonna divide each one of them essentially and then relative to hundred percent we're gonna see the relative you know percentage of values that actually fall through for sales value so how much of sales value fell in here how much of the total sales value fell for this category how much of the total sales value um, fell for this category okay now what's gonna happen next guys is after we finish doing that we're gonna change a little bit okay and let me explain why sometimes we'll get a percent so let me just click OK for a second sometimes we'll get a percent like this and let me click run or maybe it's got three thirty eight point fifty one percent or 8.10 percent or something like that or 1.1.79 percent and we can also see the hard numbers that went into configuring it like just how many sales we actually had we can see that total for each and every single part um, what we want to do over here is sometimes we just want to display the pure percent right well how would you do that would you go into number and format it nope you don't use number in this particular case you don't use the number properly